about this knitting mill. There isn't anything interesting on the sides of the box. Inside there is the knitting mill, a small piece of paper with the instructions translated in my language and the original manual. Everything is explained in detail. This is the knitting mill, it's small and compact. The weight is attached to the bottom, first we have to remove it. You can unscrew the lower part and attach the mill to the table. The best thing is that you can attach the mill to thick surfaces, for example the table of my sewing machine is about 4 cm thick and I can easily attach the mill. Now I will show you how to use it. This waste yarn is perfect for the test. First I will thread the end of the yarn in a tapestry needle. Now drop the needle in the center of the mill and pull it out from the bottom. Pass the needle through the slots in the weight and tie the end of the yarn to it. Two knots are enough. Now place the weight on the desk, we will use it in a minute. Make sure the latches on all needles are open. Take the yarn with your left hand and start to rotate the handle. Attach the yarn to the first hook, then pass it behind the second one. Attach it to the third hook and pass it behind the fourth one. The cast on is ready, continue rotating the handle and use all hooks. After completing one full round you can gently drop the weight. Make sure the yarn is passing through the guide on the front. I will place the spool on the floor. Start rotating the handle in the same direction which you chose at the beginning. You can see the idiot cord under the mill. From time to time you have to pull the cord downwards and hang the weight further up. Cut the yarn near the knot and pull the end through the center of the weight. Insert the cord into one of the side slots and continue knitting. I can watch this all day. To finish knitting cut the yarn and pull the end towards the handle. Hold the cord and rotate the handle until it falls from the mill. Now you can see the process up close. Pull the end of the yarn towards the handle so that it can't get caught on the hooks. When you take the cord from the machine you will have to sew up the open stitches. Now you can see them. You have to be very careful because the cord will start to unravel if you pull the end of the yarn. Take a tapestry needle and thread it using the end of the yarn.
Find the last loop. You need to string the loops in the direction of the yarn tail, so the last loop will be the one from which the tail comes out. Then pull the yarn and cut off the tail. This is my first cord on this mill. I am very satisfied with the result. Remove the mill from the table, screw the lower section and attach the weight to the bottom. After using it for a while, a lot of dust accumulates on the needles. The first way to clean the knitting mill is to use a brush, but you have to be very careful. I will show you a better way in a minute. You can see a few test pieces using different yarn thicknesses. And this is the eye cord that I made on my knitting machine. It's a much tighter knit. Too thick or fuzzy yarn can damage the mill. You have to be able to rotate the handle easily. Now I'm using two strands of fine cotton yarn. To clean the mill or replace a broken needle, turn the handle until the two needles become the same height. Then very gently pull the top part. To remove a needle, you have to pull it up until it comes out of the slot. I checked to see if the needle was the same as for my knitting machine, but it wasn't. I will write in the description if I find what needles the mill is using. Insert a new needle into the slot and push it down. Make sure all latches are open, then take the top part and carefully place it in position. You can wipe off the dust or wash the top part before closing the mill. Now it is working again. Let's make one bracelet. I will use these bobbins with acrylic yarn. Notice that with my left hand I am holding the yarn from the bobbins. This is the final result. In my country the red and white bracelet is called Martinica and we have a tradition of wearing them in March. If you twist it, you will get a spiral which you can sew to the edge of a garment. And here's another idea. I got this cord using 5 strands of sewing spools. If you have spools with old and dried out sewing thread, you can use them to make a cord. That's all for today, thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in my next video.